Gemini Home Entertainment, a very highly requested series on the channel and an absolute legend in the analog horror community. With around 18 videos in this series, it has definitely left its mark on YouTube. In short, the series is about an alien invasion of Earth caused by something called the Iris. Today we are going to go through all of the videos in the Gemini Home Entertainment series, and I'll be sure to give you my thoughts and theories after. Also just so you know, this full video was actually live streamed first on my YouTube channel. You guys are just watching the edited version. I hope you guys enjoy. Let's hop right in. Video 1. World's Weirdest Animals Excuse me for pausing. You guys know I don't really like pausing during analog horror, but if I gotta read something, I'm gonna pause. Oh yeah, so real quick before we get started, um, the first 30 seconds of this video is copyrighted, so it's not gonna have any audio. I apologize. World's Weirdest Animals Rural Minnesota Wilkin County Animal number one The Greater Prairie Chicken Native to Central North America, Greater Prairie Chickens are well known for their prominent air sacs and protruding ear-like feathers. These birds often engage in lecking, a form of mating ritual. The males utilize their air sacs to impress females. Alright. During the winter, Greater Prairie Chickens have been observed diving into snow to stay warm. How weird! I guess that is a little counterintuitive, right? Diving into snow to stay warm. Clay County. Alright, so we're exploring a few different counties. Animal number two. The burrowing owl. This is starting off so slow, but I know it's gonna escalate. Once found all over the Americas, this small critter is now far more elusive. As their name suggests, these owls create large burrows for their nests instead of creating ones in trees. Burrowing owls like to live in prairies and open fields where they can use old squirrel or badger holes for their nests. That's efficient. Alright, that was animal number two. It was pretty quick. Everywhere! Alright, so this one isn't county specific in Minnesota. Animal number three. Not the music stopping. Wood crawlers. Found all over North America, these animals are excellent hunters, being able to tread most terrain without making a sound. Wood crawlers. That's kind of scary. Their preferred nesting locations are inside the homes of large families, where large swarms can adapt easier. If you live in North America, RIP. You will hear screaming. They stole their voices. Burn the bodies, lest they stand up again. Nature's mockery. I don't want to raise the volume, I'm afraid it's going to get really loud. Oh, I didn't even catch that, there was a person there.
Why is he kind of T-posing? Come on, cameraman. Let's get together. Okay, looks like they're talking. Is that one outside? Fake people. I don't like that they move that way. It's like they're just sliding. So this is still wood crawler. Yeah, can we go back to the cute birds? Bro, focus the camera. Oh, that one's moving. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's the end of the first video. Like I said, I swear I really don't remember a lot of the series. I'm confused already. Uh, so we have these things called uh, wood crawlers. I almost said skinwalkers. They live in houses. They steal their voices. And it said fake humans. So what I'm confused about is does it turn into a human or morph into a human or does it take over human bodies because uh those humans in that house looked very very real if they were fake and it also looks like that they slide but also can sometimes just walk normally very weird but uh that's just the first video and i feel like we got a lot in that already and we got 16 more to go video two storm safety tips Doesn't this look like an eye? Gemini Home Entertainment. Video two, baby. Storm safety tips brought to you by Harbinge Technologies. Storms can be violent and dangerous. In this cassette, you will learn how to protect you and your family when a severe storm hits your home. Part one, prepare in advance. You do not want to get caught in a storm unprepared. To prepare your home in case of a storm, follow these steps. Step one, reinforce your home. This may involve improving structural support, replacing roof shingles, or fixing any possible leaks. All right, this generally just seems like storm safety tips. Install an early warning system. This will allow you to know beforehand if a storm or other danger is approaching your home. Recommended albedo alarm from Harbinger Technologies. Step three, create a storm bunker. Make sure the bunker matches the following measurements. 10 by 18. That's kind of spe specific now. Create concrete foundation at least eight inches thick. God damn, why does it keep getting louder? Chill. In the center of your bunker, install large aluminum hemisphere. Place shortwave radio next to hemisphere. That's weird, right? That's <laughs> that feels off. Or is there a reason for that? Within four to five feet. The bunker is okay, like it makes sense, storm bunker, but only turn on radio in the event of an emergency. Part two, what to do during a storm. Thank you, Anonymous. In the event that a storm hits your home, it is important to follow these steps. Step one, quietly take your family to your bunker. Your home does not belong to you. 
Turn on shortwave radio. Ignore all sound produced by the radio. These are auditory hallucinations. I don't think they're talking about a rainstorm anymore or like a tornado. <laughs> How would you know when there's a radio signal if you have to keep it off all the time? These are auditory hallucinations. There's a lot not making sense here. I guess, yeah, are they calling like a wood crawler invasion a storm? Because, you know, if it takes your house, it's not your home anymore. But I don't understand why you would go to a bunker if it only took over your house. Step three, remain calm. Your tears are filled with salt. Thank you for the fun fact. Um, why? Part three after a storm. Are they attracted to salt or something? If you believe the storm has passed, carefully leave your bunker to survey for damages. Okay. If your house has been severely damaged, check for movement inside. Okay. Do you hear the chime? You are safe. The storm has passed. Look to the field. Do you see lights? Return to your bunker. Under your feet, crawling through the floor, congratulations, you are now well equipped to defend you and your family against storms. That's gotta be the worst informational video I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> you gave me so much while also giving me so little. Like, what did half of that mean? At first it was like, okay, wood crawlers, right? Right, you know, invading your home, hide in a bunker. Okay, we kind of make sense. Then you start bringing up aluminum domes, radios, and then you tell me to go outside and look to the field to see if there's light. I don't see the correlation here. So I'm hoping that I mean, I'm saying I'm hoping. I know for a fact we're gonna get, this is all gonna be explained by the time we finish all 16 videos. But wow, this is a, this is a lot of information to drop on us right now. Video three, artificial computer learning. Regnad computing. Um, that's danger backwards, by the way. I don't know if that's important or just coincidence. Artificial computer learning. Brief background. For the past four years, Regnad computing have been developing artificial computer intelligence using new revolutionary methods. These methods have led to produce the world's most advanced artificial intelligence to date. As a test of this intelligence's abilities, we gave it the task of creating an original, intelligible story in the format of a children's storybook. Three iterations of the story will be shown, illustrating the creation process utilized by the artificial intelligence. Okay, so computer made a story and three versions of it. Jack leapt over the river. Jack leapt over the river, Mary to follow together. Travel, follow the secret. Jack, the river, it is dead. I think the AI needs a little more work. I did see it says iteration one, yeah. First iteration tests heed insufficient results through patterns and story consistency are clearly visible, albeit unrefined. I agree. Iteration two. Jack leapt over the river. Mary followed close behind. They are searching for the secret place. I hear you. 
We were so close there, AI, so close. The intelligence builds upon its previous iteration, utilizing complex wordage and proper grammar and formatting. Iteration three. Jack leapt over the river. There goes Mary down the stream. The secret place will keep us safe. The river flows, but not with water. I'm even more confused about that one. The intelligence seems to diverge from its original path and begins a more complex branch of sentences. Yeah, what else would the river be flowing with? Blood, right? Iteration 4! I didn't know we were getting fourth. Jack heard it again. There is a voice from space. Jack, do you see me? It's gotta be Mary talking, right? I've become something else. It's not lemonade, I'll tell you that. Listen to the silver box. The stars are moving now. Do you see the hungry eye? Here I am. We'll go back, don't worry. This video should have demonstrated to you the capabilities of Regnad Competing's artificial intelligence. We hope to have this technology available for commercial and personal use within the year. I know they're laying groundwork here, but God damn, there, there's so much. There's just a lot going on here. Uh, silver box, I do connect to the radio. Okay, I think we obviously know horror. We Our best guess here is that the river flows with blood. So Mary goes down the stream and then all of a sudden, it seems like Mary's talking to Jack from space or this could be this could be a separate separate thought jack heard it again there's this voice from space then it says jack do you see me guessing that this is mary talking i've become something else which we can also connect i've become something else to maybe the wood crawlers when they actually do take over humans they become something else okay this is the logo. This is literally the Gemini Entertainment logo. I had just said, looked like that that was an eye or something. Intent, alive, visual distortion. It's literally the same, the same description. And then we get this thing, which is something with an eye and arms. Video four, our solar system. All right, this solar system, are we going planet by planet? Or, yep, thing by thing. The sun, situated 149 million miles away, the sun provides a light for our entire solar system. Without it, Earth would be a barren frozen rock. Mercury, as one of the smallest planets in our solar system, Mercury is also the hottest. All right, so we're going in order from left to right. It sits... Per perilously close to the sun and only takes eight, 87 days to orbit around it. Sorry, I had a brain glitch there. Venus. What is this music? As the second brightest object, the night sky, Venus can sometimes be seen from Earth. The average surface temperature of the planet is 462 degrees Celsius. Earth! Hey! Earth is one of the only planets in our solar system capable of supporting life. With 71% of the planet covered with water, it's a miracle we can all fit. Shout out Earth. Mars. 
Often called the Red Planet, Mars is a mostly barren desert world. Pieces of Mars have fallen to Earth in the form of meteorites. I wonder if that's important. Jupiter. As a gas giant, Jupiter has no solid surface, which makes it impossible to stand on it. The large spot on the planet is known as the Great Red Spot. It is not an eye. Bro. <laughs> Saturn. Although mostly a gas giant, there may be a large solid core deep inside the planet. This planet's prominent rings are quite a sight to behold. They are the gateway. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 Who are you? Hold on a minute. Who is this guy over here? Somebody's taking a sneak peek right now. It's not your scene yet, buddy. This is about Saturn. You're not supposed to come in here. Who does he think he is? Trying to take up Saturn's screen time? Get the hell out of here. Was that Uranus? They do look similar. I didn't even mean to set that one up like that. This planet is classified as an ice giant and is the coldest planet in our solar system. Unlike most planets, Uranus rotates on its side. <laughs> Neptune. A large storm rages in the planet called the Great Dark Spot. It is the lens. Neptune has been mutated. The iris. It is with us now. Laughing at us. Behold. <laughs> okay, you can't just go back to... <laughs> <laughs> you can't just act like that didn't happen. Um, all right, we'll just go through Pluto and then we'll go back. Pluto, as the smallest planet in our solar system, Pluto is only 1,188.3 km in radius. Although it hangs at the edge of our solar system, this planet isn't going anywhere. Okay, so quite a few red flags going on here. Yeah, so quite a couple of these planets do look like that they straight up have eyes like that straight up looked like an eye was about to open this looks like an eye but what's interesting is that there's also the iris like what the hell is that the large spot on the planet is known as the great red spot and it is not an eye oh the text changes oh great red spot it is an open wound Thank you. I didn't even I wasn't even looking at the text. I was trying to look at the planet. Interesting. OK, what planet is this? Looks like it's straight up shooting a beam at another one. Yeah, Saturn is the gateway. That's another thing I got to write down. Jesus, all of these planets got something going on. Yeah, lots of questions. Gateway to where? Why is um, why does Jupiter have a wound? Mars meteorites fall uh, fallen to Earth was also another thing. Iris straight up laughing at us for whatever reason. Yeah, the iris does seem a little a little bit devious. Video 5. Camp information video. Moonlight Acres Family Camp. Come visit Moonlight, a Moonlight Acres Family Camp. Since our founding, Moonlight Acres has been devoted to family and creating memories. 
Our campground is as pristine and beautiful as ever a relic from the past. Many of the original camp buildings remain untouched since the initial closure. Let's look at some of the activities our camp has to offer. What do they mean by initial closure? Hiking. With so many expensive tra exp with so many expansive trails, hiking is a regular occurrence at our camp. Just make sure you don't get lost. Archery has been a tradition throughout our camp's lifetime, with the targets getting more extravagant every year. So many red flags already. Our canoe trips are always a blast. And let's not forget about the f our famous lights in the sky events. That's called harvest? What we harvest in? That ain't no light event. <laughs> this is not normal. Also, why does it talk about... <laughs> Just make sure you don't get lost. And also, the target's getting more extravagant every year. What do you mean by that? Accommodations. No need to pitch a tent. Moonlight Acres has tons of places to lay your head. Sleep in luxury at one of our family cabins, completely burrow free. Is that a wood crawler reference? For the kids, we have separate boys and girls cabins, each with fun activities all year round. Feeling rustic? Stay at one of the camp's original cabins, which are frequently cleaned and always cozy. Each and every cabin at Moonlight Acres is beautifully decorated. With the most up-to-date safety technology, you can rest assured knowing your security is in our hands. This was in the storm video. Do not answer the knocking at the door. Yo, if the wood crawlers are nice enough to knock on my door, I appreciate it. Thanks for knocking instead of just busting it down. Mythos. An important part of Moonlight Acres' legacy is its mythos. Tall tales have been told from person to person throughout the camp's lifetime. In 1935, rumors of strange well-dressed men visiting the camp began to make their rounds. It is said that the men would ask to enter the camp's administrator's cabin every night for years. One night, a deal was made with the strange men, and they left the camp, never to be seen again. Another popular myth arose in the 30s, when campgoers began to have sightings of skinwalkers. I hate pausing, but I have to. So we have skin walkers and wood crawlers. So the skin walkers are the knockers here. Adam Levitch, men's club superior, answer door. Barry Johnson, assistant activity supervisor, answer door, answer door, answer door, answer door. Asked to enter. That didn't look like a wood crawler or a skinwalker. So this is the thing that's knocking. This thing looks huge, huge. Like this, this, um, this pole here has to be just to show you how big it is. Okay, this thing has like 
legs coming out of it, or it could be the arms that we saw just now. Yeah, I don't see anything in the door there. Also, apparently there was well-dressed men showing up, and then one day they just stopped showing up. Sounds like that they could have made a, a deal, a deal with, um, with the camp administrator. Video 6. Lethal Omen Commercial. Lethal Omen! Hey yo, why are we changing colors like that? That's a first, right? Hey, okay. Intense action. Challenging puzzles. High quality graphics. I don't know about that one. <laughs> hey yo, hey yo, aluminum dome with radio? Or dome with radio? Lethal Omen, $29.99 plus tax, available for Regnad Computing. Oh my god, and we got gameplay. Why would you make a shooting game at a camp? This does seem like it's at Moonlight Acres family camp. Yeah, the archery. Like, who's that guy? Who are these guys? Oh, hold up. They looked a little rooty. Looked like they had like roots on their legs or something. Got a storm bunker. No enemies this time. All enemies dead. If you hear the chime, right? Go back to the bunker. Oh, here we go. Now we have the aluminum dome in the radio. That is a smaller dome than I expected as well. Lethal Omen uses revolutionary artificial intelligence as a basis for its video game engine. Guaranteed we see the harvest right now. I'm calling it. The iris. 
You can find Lethal Omen in stores worldwide. Second off, uh, I will be playing Lethal Omen. It won't be today, but it will be. We will be playing it at some point. Yep, it's on itch.io and it is free. We'll be playing this eventually. Definitely seems like it'll be an interesting game and there's gotta be more lore in there as well. Video seven, Wilderness Survival Guide. Wilderness Survival Guide. Let's get it. Jack Wilders, Wilderness Survival Guide. Whether you're camping, hiking, or hunting, it's important to stay safe when going into the wilderness. This cassette will teach you many survival tips that might just save your life. Essentials, be prepared. There's basic knowledge that every wildlife explorer should know, including what equipment to keep on hand. Water flask, non-perishable foods, first aid kit, matches, compass, knife. Store these items in a backpack. Seems pretty fair. Be aware, thorns, ditches, and rivers could lead to serious injury if not accounted for. Watch out for those guys. Camping or hiking in private properties or hunting grounds could lead to serious fines or worse. Please make sure you have the proper permits before entering an area. Everything seems pretty normal so far. Things to avoid. Bears. Cougars. Moose. If you come face to face with any of these animals, stay calm, do not run. Slowly back away, keeping your eyes on the animal. <laughs> this guy just slowly like hovering away. If the animal displays aggression, raise your voice and speak sternly. Once out of eyesight. Whoa! I see why you guys were saying don't trust the bear. Poison ivy causes rashes, itching, swelling, blisters. Uh, random fun story about this. So back when I used to do my abandoned exploring stuff, literally like three days before prom, I decided to go to an abandoned place uh, upstate and got poison ivy for the first time ever. Got it all over my arm and needed to wear like a like a bandage, I guess, to prom because um it was literally on my arm. Like out of all times, really. Water hemlock causes trembling, convulsions, respiratory failure, death. Okay. Nature's mockery. Causes hallucinations, sudden muscular paralysis, body disfigurement, and flesh decay. This looks like uh, what was in the game trailer just now. Nature's mockery. If you make physical contact with any of these plants, seek medical assistance. Always keep a first aid kit on hand. I don't know, it doesn't sound like you're surviving nature's mockery very much. Sounds. Turning up the volume. Warning. Okay, avoid coyote howls. Cougar screams. Auditory hallucination. If you hear any of these sounds, leave the area immediately. Do not move towards the sound. If you hear them, they have already heard you. Building a campfire. What you will need. Large stones, dry grass and leaves, dry twigs and branches, matches, dry logs. Create a ring of stones in desired location. Dude, this is like uh, the forest. I know how to do this. I played that game. <laughs> Place tinder inside of stone ring. Place kindling in a TP formation. 
Set fire to tinder using matches. What to do if your fire fails to start? Follow the lights. Oh, this is it. This is it, baby. I don't remember anything from this series except for this. There's something so it, it looks you're either going to see it two ways. You're either going to see that that's goofy as hell or you're going to see that it's actually insanely disturbing. Like there's something about someone screaming for help like that. That's so unsettling. And you like you clearly know that's that's a that's a uh, wood crawler or skinwalker. Like it's it's obviously a fake person. Yeah. And I've, I've said this a thousand times before. That's why I think mimics alternates are all like top horror creepiness. There's something that there's some, um, what is it called? Somebody taught me about this in the comments, uncanny Valley, where it's like something that acts human is like a genuine fear. It's just something like that. That's so disturbing. So disturbing. Do you believe if you believe you have been infected through a wound, do the following wash wounds with water and soap, use antibiotic ointment on injury, forcefully rip foreign object from body. I think what's scary the most about it about like this situation here is that what happens if it actually sees you it's kind of unclear if this thing actually sees this guy in the video right now how would it it's clearly trying to lure you in it's copying this voice that's calling for help it's clearly trying to get your attention it's trying to lure in anybody it can is what is it going to do to you when it actually gets what it wants video eight Sleep image visualizer. <laughs> now y'all fighting over breakfast foods. All right, what's this one called? <laughs> back into the back into the lore. Sleep image visualizer. What the hell does that mean? Harbinger Technologies back at it again. They made the storm video, correct? Sleep image visualizer setup and information. Introduction to the sleep image visualizer. Sleep image visualizer main module. Computer connection port. Module power port. Headset connection port. Configuration panel. SIV headset module connection cord. Absorption pads. Aluminum dome. Adjustable clamp. At first I was like, really? Do they need to tell me all the parts? But this is making more sense. Setting up the sleep image visualizer. Connect the sleep image visualizer SIV to your computer using the cord provided. Connect the SIV headset to the SIV main module using the cord provided. 
Insert the SIV home use disk into your personal computer and follow installation instructions. Using the Sleep Image Visualizer. Boot up your personal computer and run the SIV home use software. Sleep Image Visualization Levi Jacobs began at 5.24 a.m. December 12th, ended 5.30 a.m. December 12th. So six minutes. Turn the SIV main module on and lie in bed. Your SIV will begin recording automatically. Good night. Sleep image visualization, Adrian Gordon, 4, 6 a.m. to 4, 10, 4 minutes. What the hell was going on in that one? Upon waking up, check your computer for your fully rendered sleep image visualization. I have no idea what the hell that is. That totally looks like a backrooms level. Straight up. Thank you for taking part in the sleep image visualization program. Please note that all sleep image visualizations are automatically sent to you. Legal property of... Yeah. Okay. We have another one. 8 a.m. through... No. 3 a.m. to 6.17 p.m. Jack Dean, so that's over, that's like... Hey, yo, what kind of dream is this? Reminder, sleep image visualizer takes images from your conscious, unconscious mind and visualizes them. These images do not represent reality. Dreams cannot tell the future. Joseph Allen began at 4 or 6 a.m. No end time. Do these people just look like this because the computer can't visualize the faces correctly? That that would make sense to me. Because it looks like two different people that have the dream about the same looking thing or person. I feel like we're going to get more about this eventually. And then it also says that dreams can't tell the future, but... Or your brain can't. That's also true. That's like when you dream about something and you know that somebody was there, but you couldn't visualize their face. Something like that. This series has a lot of different things going on but they all connect in like subtle ways like the ai computer and the solar system stuff and the whole camp and everything and then the camp video game it's just a lot of different things that all subtly connect video nine games for kids all right so this is video number 11 10 something like that Optica video! Hey kids, are you bored? Need some new fun games to play? Well, you're in luck. Games for kids. Wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. All right, wait, 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 Apparently there is reversed audio in this section of the video. Let's try to be slowly hot trajectory or high energy hot 
Yeah, it sounds something like a class or something. Yeah, I can only make out in this class, so it's some kind of test thing. So is that not even like lore related? Is that just a complete? <laughs> is that just generally this guy's dream? He's dreaming about like a class? <laughs> a list of fun classic games to play with friends. Game one. Hide and go seek. One player is chosen as the seeker while everyone else are hiders. The seeker counts the 20 and then searches for the hiders. There he is. Hey, found you. The last hider to be found wins. All right, very, this is a very basic tutorial of hide and seek. One player is chosen as it while everyone else are runners. Freeze tag. It has to chase and tag the runners. When a runner is tagged, they freeze. If a frozen runner is tagged by another runner, they get to play again. Tag. When all the runners are frozen, it wins. I don't like that they call it it like that. Sardines. Sardines is similar to hide and go seek, except one player is chosen as the hider and everyone else is seekers. You know, I actually don't think I've played this version. <laughs> the seekers count to 20 while the hider hides as fast as they can. When a seeker finds the hider, they try their best to hide with them. Oh, that's interesting. I see you. Oh my god. <laughs> Why did they all just fall over like that? The game ends when everyone is hiding. It's such a weird concept. Feed the woods. All players wait until it is very dark and your parents have fallen asleep. Sneak outside very quietly and gather all of your friends. Go into the woods. Walk until you cannot see the lights anymore. Scream on the top of your lungs. Whoa. The game ends when the forest is fed. Bro looks so confused because I am. How much of this? Found you. Iris found the earth. It does seem that way. Dude, I am very confused by that. Is the forest actually alive or is it just talking about like feeding these creatures that are in the forest? Like, you know, skin crawlers, wood crawlers, skin walkers, wood crawlers, and uh, whatever that other thing is that knocks on doors. Straight up eating a cop car is also very interesting. Video 10 Advanced Mining Vehicle. NAMAD Northern Alberta Mining and Development
After years of development, NAMAD is proud to unveil the future of mining technology. Oh my god! Wait, you guys know exactly where I'm going with this, right? Yeah, cave crawler, dude. What? That is almost identical. That's not connected, right? That's just this has to be inspired by this. Yeah, I don't think I think it's just heavily inspired. That's really cool, though. If you haven't seen that video, by the way, cave crawler is a really cool game. Probably very similar to what you're about to see. Whoa. Yeah, this definitely came out before Cave Crawler. The remote operational compact tunneler is the vehicle to revolutionize mining. Controlled entirely via computer. Traverses areas normally inhospitable to humans. Equipped with four treads on the vehicle's body, difficult terrain is no longer an issue. With highly advanced maneuverability, there's no need to worry if you get caught between a rock and a hard place. Dude, that's actually so cool that, that, that there's a connection there. The ROCT uses two high-powered hydraulic drills to maneuver quickly and effectively through rock and clay. Depth 37. Rotating camera attached to the vehicle provides a live video feed of the ROCT. The camera can pivot 360 degrees horizontally and 90 degrees vertically via the control terminal. Dude, yeah, that's exactly the same as Cave Crawler's zoom in system. Definitely heavily inspired. What is that? Okay, guess it doesn't matter. Anonymous, welcome back with the name change. Star Watcher, Gretchen, I like the name. Especially handy for listening for hazards such as running water or nests. That is compromised. Oh my god, look at the depth. Rebooting. Hmm. An industrial grade battery ensures long life for the ROCT. Special casing keeps the battery secure and allows for a reboot in the case that the vehicle is compromised. Got some stalagmites, stalactites, whatever they're called. Lots of roots. Blood pumps through the garden's veins. The crops mature. Hello? What is the bright ass light that far underground? Oh, uh, 
Shifting tendon shape anatomy. Mutation of the heart. I don't like that it's spider-like, man. Oh, look at that depth. We hope you enjoyed this demonstration of the remote-operated compact tunneler by Namad. More information regarding the ROCT can be found in your booklet. Yeah, Cave Crawler was 1000% inspired off of this. Advancing, advanced mining vehicle created by Remy Abode. Okay, so this gives me a new theory now, because now I feel like, obviously I'm going to say it again. Now I'm thinking all about like Cave Crawler and stuff. And in Cave Crawler, the game was kind of like showing you how the caves itself were alive and the caves itself were like almost like uh kind of like a digestive system almost for some giant creature, you know, but you thought you were going in caves, but really the cave was alive the whole time and it was just one gigantic creature underground. We see these creatures underground that we know come up to the surface sometimes because we've also seen that same thing on the surface. There's also the roots, which I believe are obviously very important. I'm wondering if the iris or whatever these alive planets are, are kind of like infecting earth slowly because it seems that now it's just more than creatures now like it goes deep you know what i mean like we obviously saw it was going down to like 500 whatever that was meters i'm guessing so it, i feel like it's almost like the earth is infected in a way and it just keeps spreading with these creatures and whatnot growing on it as well video 11 deep root disease Warner Area Department of Health. Deep Root Disease, an educational film. Ah, sorry. Sections, roots, contradiction, bulbs, diagnosis, sprouts. Roots. Roots begin to form from the underside of bulbs once rooting stage begins. The speed of the growth increases as rooting stage progresses. The base of the roots swells as growth continues and the surrounding area becomes discolored. Is this talking about on the human skin? Or what? The roots will continue forming until coming into contact with a bu- Oh yeah, it, it is talking about on humans. Once contact is made, the roots are able to spread freely. Contraction. The following demonstration will explain how an individual may contract deep root disease. What was that? You just showed me somebody sleeping. What does that mean? Does that mean that it com someone comes into your house and just drops it on you? Or like you could just get it when you sleep? What's going on there? Typically appearing on any normally exposed part of the body, arms, legs, neck, bulbs are the first visible sign of deep root disease. Bulbs can range from 2 centimeters to 10 centimeters across, meaning their growth may remain unnoticed for any amount of time. 
the first few hours of appearance bulbs feel hollow and may be pressed down with ease. Once rooting stage begins, the bulb will become solid and those affected may experience pain when the pressure is applied to the area. The area will become inflamed as rooting stage progresses and small sores may appear around the affected area. As rooting stage reaches its climax, these lumps will begin to form ra more rapidly. Inflammation then abruptly halts as sprouting begins. So then it starts sprouting outwards? So it's literally like a plant is growing inside of you. Diagnosis. If you believe somebody you know has contracted deep root disease, proceed with this very simple diagnosis test. Check for a bulb on exposed skin. For erratic muscle spasms. They're home for unrecognizable smells. Hey yo, any of your homes smelly? You might got deep root disease. Ask if they can recall their mother's name, if they've stopped dreaming, if they have felt new bones. The stopped dreaming and memory loss is interesting. If four or more of these tests describe an individual you know, they have become something else. Proceed with protective safety measures. There we go with that description of becoming something else. Sprouts. Or is this just straight up how you turn into like a wood crawler? Whoa, what was that? Yeah, Dream Visualizer sounds... <laughs> Bro. <laughs> These videos always get you like so hyped up and then it's like, over. Nope, that's all you get for now. That's all the information on this topic. Next topic. Like, okay. Thanks, dude. Oh, where was that? Uh, it looked like it was just a, like a, oh yeah, this is what I was looking for. This is a picture. This looks like a fence. I thought maybe this was just like a glitch or something, but no, that's, that looks like a, like a fence and then a house here, maybe. Video 12, monthly progress report. Regnad Computing. Back to Regnad. Project Information. Project Name, Project Infrared. Manager, Duncan Parnell. Organizer, Kennedy Silva. ACL Manager, Alexis Moore. Status, Active. Progress, 84% complete. Client, Active. Communication, Available. Project Description. The study of assisted technological progress via artificial computer. Learning for the following purposes. To predict and prevent future technology failures, to advance in the field of technological discovery, especially computer processing and memory. Computer processing, predictive advancement, failure avoidance, ACL communication. Computer processing. Developments throughout the month of October have led to a drastic increase in graphical capabilities for Regnad brand personal computers. The above image displays a video game demonstration created to showcase the graphical capabilities possible with recent advancements. Truly remarkable graphics. Predictive advancement. Gradual improvements to the ACL influence have led the predictive advancement accuracy to reach unprecedented heights. A total of 15 simulations have been run during the month of October, with each test giving new insight into unprecedented technological advancements. With the help of ACL and our clients, we are expected to pass all of our competitors within the year in the field of graphics, RAM, and processing power. Failure avoidance. By running hypothetical scenarios throughout the ACL system, we have successfully avoided 23 technological failures in Regnad Computing's future. This would not have been possible without the support and wisdom from our clients who spearheaded our artificial computer learning projects. ACL Communication All communications made with our clients throughout the month of October have been recorded via the ACL monitor room and will now be showcased on this tape. Okay. 
Hello. All systems online. What the hell? Activating transmitter array. Transmitter array active. Speaking room online. Entering prompt. Earth. Client ready for speaker. Activating speaker. Speaker active receiving iteration. Running iteration. Iteration 1417. Mary sees the gateway die. Sleeping ones are eaten whole. The vessel floats into the maw. The jaw unhinges. Prompt moonlight. Receiving iteration. Running iteration. What is this that I'm looking at? New things roam the feeding grounds. The harbinger guards in vain. Mary hears a creaking sound. The hungry eyes welcomed. Ending iteration. Entering prompt. Jack. Is it Jack Wilder? Jack is with us now. Final words, in short, the progress made throughout the month of October has drastically increased our technological capabilities. Our client's influence on the ACL system has allowed for tremendous progress to be made. We expect to meet our client in person in as little as seven months. I'm, think I'm thinking the Iris is the client, but as far as everything else said, I have no idea what any of it means. Video 13, Christmas Eve Party. Moonlight Acres Family Camp, 1985 Christmas Eve Party. Coordinator, Barry Johnson, videographer. Videography, Jack Dean, Mary D Oh. Jack and Mary. So the people recording right now are Jack and Mary. Cute snowman. Okay, so one of them's inside, one of them's outside.
Bro, get out of the forest. Okay, yeah, nah, I gotta go. Jay, thank you for the $5 super chat. The knocking. Don't answer the door. Is that in reverse? What is that? A lakeside cabin, a home of celebrations. Alex Whitler and videographer Jack Dean. Okay, so it was Mary. Mary did say that she was becoming something else. Video 14. Home Invasion Help. This one is called Home Invasion Help. Optica Video! Home invasion help and safety. Home invasion can be daunting and stressful prospect. This videotape is intended to ease your stress and prepare you for a home invasion, step by step, should the moment arise. Keep in mind, windows and doors are the most commonly used entrances during home invasions. Ensuring that these areas are locked may prevent or slow home invaders, allowing for authorities to be called. A number of security systems can be installed in a home, including cameras, motion detectors, and alarms. All of these systems may be disabled via blunt force. As most home invasions take place at night, insufficient lighting can successfully stop a home invader before they even reach the house. Sufficient lighting, sorry. The following is a list of commonly used methods of entry during home invasions. Breaking a window can create easy access into the home. Note that this will cause noise that may alert prey. Vocal vocalizing or making percussive noise against the door may cause prey to be drawn to it, allowing for easy access into the home. Burrowing underneath the home's foundation can create access into the home from below, allowing for easy access between nests. The following will explain what to do upon entry into a home. So this is for... Lo 
locate prey, incapacitate prey. Enter prey via prob probos probos what does that mean? The nose of a mammal. Proboscis, thank you. <laughs> so they enter through your nose. Yo, it's the same, um, it's the same house from like 10 videos ago. Like the first house that we ever saw in the series. When he looks in the window, he sees like a washing machine right here. I don't know if that's canon or if this is just, if this is just the creator's house, but. Yet. Are these people that like died to deep root disease? They literally just became roots. Nah, bro tripped. GG. Okay, hold on. You guys are saying the eye moved? It did move. That's even more disturbing. So it enters your home, infects everybody with deep root disease, and that's it. But they're still alive? Ah, uh, they birth more creatures using humans, so they kind of infect them with deep root disease, absorb their nutrients through the disease, then creating new creatures from it. I think that actually, that, that does make sense. Because it doesn't just seem like these things are just outright killing people, you know what I mean? It seems like they are using them. Yeah, they need, they need some chow. They just hungry. They just hungry for real. Video 15. Crusader Probe Mission. Crusader Probe Mission. Three videos left. We almost done. We almost done. Geneva. Production company. This is a new one. High educational videos? High quality educational videos. Crusader 5. Introduction. After 12 long years, Crusader 5 successfully completed its planetary flyby mission, resulting in a plethora of new data and photographs. Oh, they did do a video earlier? I must have not noticed. Crusader 5. During its mission, Crusader photographed Jupiter, Saturn, and Neptune. Jupiter. Crusader reached Jupiter. Hey. I was reading. 
Crusader incident timeline, outlining the timeline of events leading up to and during the Crusader incident. June 1982, Crusader approaches Jupiter. June 15th, July 3rd, August 12th. Callisto, moon of Jupiter. Europa, moon of Jupiter. Io, moon of Jupiter. December 1985, Crusader approaches Saturn. Saturn rings are considered the gateway, remember. Titan, moon of Saturn. Iepetus, moon of Saturn. Chiron, Chiron, moon of Saturn. September 1991, Crusader approaches Neptune. And Neptune was considered mutated. Oh my god, of course. I'm going to have to go back to that. November 20th, 1991. Okay. February 1992, Crusader approaches first cluster. Damn, so we're just going to ignore Neptune? Th Themis, moon of Saturn. Hestia, Cadlu, moon of Jupiter, moon of Uranus. Seto, moon of Jupiter. They're all deformed. December 1992, Crusader approaches... Iris. Oh no, Cyst? Oh yeah, Moon of Iris, yep. Umbilic. Moon of Fit Vitreus? Yukos, Moon of Iris. Macula, Moon of Iris. Vitreus, Moon of Iris. I was going to say the names do seem like they have a meaning. January 1993, uh... Crap, I didn't I missed that. Crusader experiences sudden gravitational pull. Is it getting pulled into the iris? Crusader enters a s it's so f like it's a s like it ate it. Crusader enters respiratory spinal complex. It literally ate the Crusader. Crusader approaches conscious mind. Can you imagine the horror of sending out a satellite just to take pictures of the planets and it gets eaten by another planet?
Whoa. Crusader signal lost for seven months. Okay. So it's connected to everything, including the creatures on Earth. So much so that it literally sees through them. May 1994. Crusader approaches Earth. Conclusion, Crusader's voyage through space has been thrilling for scientists and space enthusiasts alike, uncovering hundreds of new exciting possibilities for humanity's future. Who knows what's in store for Earth next? So is the iris's goal to just eat Earth? Because it literally has, I mean, it's literally got a mouth. Because it also does kind of look like it's like merging things together around it to maybe grow bigger. Like they're almost... They're almost merging together and it might infect these planets with different things or different creatures to like kind of prepare it in a way. Check the date on the Harbinger update video about two ago. Is that a connection? Is that what you're trying to point out to me? The seven months? October to May is seven months. And it says it expects to meet the client in seven months after October. I, I do think that's a connection. If they're talking about how it's a big deal that they're, um, that they made all this progress in October and then it vanishes and they said they expect it in seven months from now and then just so happens to pop up seven months later. I actually really like that detail. I would have never noticed that if you guys didn't point that out, to be honest. Video 16, Wretched Hands. The following segment utilized a live feed of Lake Montebank in Canada during its broadcast, approximately 25 minutes before first attack. Tonight, mostly cloudy, lows around 25 degrees, light snow. This is December, December 24th. May 3rd, 1946. Curtis, come down to the camp this weekend. Fulton and I have devised a plan on how we can continue to uphold the deal without giving into these beings' abhorrent demands. Richards has seen a bear lurking near the boys' cabins. We will go out and shoot it. If the statue wants a sacrifice, it will have to settle for this. I will be a pawn no longer. Curtis, I tell you this with complete certainty. If I could do it over again, I would never have made that deal. Glenn Arthur. The deal with the, uh, with the nicely dressed men. May 1946. Wretched hands tap my window. A stranger's fangs scrape the walls. right thigh beyond Nadler neck region underside Lloyd Michaels Christine Hoyt. So this is a, some like giant creature that absorbed all of them. This is all the people that answered the door in the camp. And they were like listing off the names earlier. Darcy Ogden.
Mary Dean. Glenn Arthur. Bro, how, you can, how can you even tell that's Glenn? Come on. Photo comparison suggest, suggests an exponential increase in organism deterioration since mutation. Organism has since lost all resemblance to a bear. It's the monster from the Christmas party. Oh, damn it. That was it. Video 17, Shifting Tendons. Sleep image visualization, Barry Johnson. 2.30 a.m., 2.34 a.m. July 10th. Holding room design. Barry Johnson, assistant activity supervisor, Levi Jacobs, head of security. Metal door with feeding slot. Escape hatch. July 16, 1991, six days into self quarantine. Wait. This is July 16th, 1991. And then when was this? July 10th. Because it's clearly the same angle as the dream. Or the same view. So it's the view from in the holding cell. Figure one. So he's in, he's infected with deep root disease. August 6, 1991, 27 days in. going on waffles yeah uh, berries berries done September 7th, 59 days into quarantine. We're gonna open the door, see how he looks. Staff prepare to enter holding room following estimated incubation time. 
Staff are equipped with protective suits to avoid contact with deep root growths. Mostly harmless. Yeah, I have a feeling Barry's not recovering from this. Interviews performed to assess Barry Johnson's psychological state. Can you hear me? Do you know who you are? Just repeating. Let's leave. Let's leave. Let's leave. Interior of Barry Johnson is discovered to be occupied. Camp staff initiate protective safety measures. So, it's 2.06 a.m. I just finished this video. And when I first streamed this, Gemini Home Entertainment hadn't uploaded in over a year. I think it was kind of up in the air whether the series was going to continue or if it was ever even going to finish. That was until yesterday, when Gemini Home Entertainment uploaded a new video for the first time in over a year. Which means this series is continuing. And I don't want to give my final thoughts and theories until I watch the new video because I heard it's pretty good. The truth is, if I added on that video to this video, I don't think I'd be able to get it done in time and this video is long enough as it is. So. If you guys want to see me react to the newest video, and if you want to see me play the game that ties into this analog horror series, please be sure to like the video. I worked my ass off on this one. I sadly know it wasn't my best work because I streamed it, so it was a bit more difficult to edit and the quality of the video overall. I promise to correct that in the future. But please guys, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like, drop a comment, anything please. <laughs> this is the longest video I've ever uploaded on the channel, and I hope you guys enjoyed it overall. So far, Gemini Home Entertainment is an incredible series, which I think is leading up to an incredible finale. I honestly don't know if we're even close to the end of the series yet, but I'm happy to see that it's continuing still. If you guys have any theories or anything, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. I think I'll give you guys my finalized theory in the next video when I react to the newest video that they dropped, just because I don't want to say anything and then get my theory immediately crushed in the newest video. But thank you guys so much for watching. Please, as always, go support the original work. The link to the original channel for Gemini Home Entertainment will be in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you to death. Big shout out to all my members. You guys are absolutely incredible. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.